loss, it's very hard to describe what it's like to lose this telescope. I wouldn't be a scientist without this telescope. Sabrina Steerwalt is an extragalactic astrophysicist who is mourning the recent loss of the Arecibo telescope in Puerto Rico, which recently collapsed. So it's really, really devastating watching this footage. It's it's like watching, you know, your dreams fall out of the sky and, and crash to the ground. For me personally, I started using Arecibo when I first started off trying to get my PhD. And so I was 22. I was a first generation student. Not a lot of people looked like me in, in my classes. I was often the only woman in my class. But I had grown up seeing the Arecibo telescope in contact, seeing Jodie Foster uh, being the main scientist in that movie. So for me, being entrusted with this amazing piece of equipment and being able to use it for science uh, at my own direction was just such an incredible, formative part of what made me a scientist. Steerwalt explains how the Arecibo telescope worked. Emission from space, light from space comes in, it hits this really big dish and gets reflected into what we call the dome, this piece that used to hang over top. And that light gets collected and there are lots of high-tech receivers in there that then help us interpret that light so we can observe things from outer space. Arecibo operated for 57 years and it looks at radio wavelengths. So the, this is light that we can't see with our eyes. So most of our normal telescopes look in optical light, the same light that we see with our eyes. But Arecibo looks at longer wavelength light, radio light. So it can see things that other telescopes can't. And it, in particular, it looks at pulsars, which are rapidly rotating dead stars. Galaxies, so this is what I used Arecibo for for many years, looking at entire galaxies. So we live in a galaxy that has hundreds of billions of stars like our sun. So you can see galaxies by looking for those stars in optical light. But there are galaxies out there that aren't very good at forming stars, like our Milky Way galaxy. And so we need telescopes like Arecibo to see the emission from the gas and the dust that they have in them because they're, they haven't formed stars out of that stuff yet. And so that's what uh, one of the things that Arecibo can do. It also had the most powerful transmitter, radar transmitter, unparalleled. And so what this means is it shoots radio waves into space in order to do things like map planets and moons uh, in our solar system. It was also a big uh, component of our understanding of asteroids, where these near-Earth asteroids, as we call them, so the asteroids that might come and hit us. Arecibo helped map them and map their trajectories so we could understand if something was coming in. When the telescope's support cables began to fail earlier this year, the National Science Foundation deemed Arecibo too expensive to repair. But Steerwalt says politics are also part of Arecibo's demise. I think part of what we're seeing reflects the fact that Puerto Rico doesn't have representation in Congress. So we, we did have a huge telescope collapse in West Virginia a few decades ago, and the representatives there were able to get funding to repair it and bring it back to this, this beautiful Green Bank Observatory that I've also used. Uh, but Puerto Rico doesn't have that same representation. Despite its collapse, there's hope that the telescope can be rebuilt. There's a large interest in restoring this telescope. And so even now, there's a movement to rebuild and rebuild better, because that's what we do. We, we have no business rebuilding if we don't improve on what we already made. And so there's a big push because it's so irreplaceable in terms of its planetary radar, in terms of the, the connections that people have with this telescope. This telescope is worth fighting for. It's meant so much to so many people and made such important contributions to science that I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do next with this region, with this space, uh, with this energy behind the telescope, and with the amazing people um, from Puerto Rico. This is Inside Edition.